This recipe is dedicated to my mom, Mary Coutinho. She was an amazing cook and I loved many of her recipes, but I have to say Sorpatel was my favorite. Sarpatel spelt with an O or an A is rumored to have come from the Portuguese from the Alentejo region. Now when the Portuguese came to India, they quickly established their colonies. One of them was in Goa. The Goans adapted this recipe and christened it Sor Potel. Now, Soro in Konkani means alcohol, and it's just my theory that this recipe might have contained alcohol at one point. There are other versions of this recipe. The Mangalorians have their own version and the East Indians have theirs. I love my Sor Patel just like my mother made it. Perfectly cubed meat in a deep red, sour and spicy gravy. She uses a very typical Goan recipe. I would imagine that she got it from my grandmother who was also an amazing cook. There's so many other recipes out there. I've seen versions that are brown and have large chunks of meat. Those just don't cut it for me. So Patel is traditionally made with pork and offal, which is basically organs like liver and kidney. But since we don't eat pork in our household, I was toying with the idea of making a chicken sorpatel for years. I asked my mom repeatedly for her recipe and just last year, I found this email from her where she sounded rather annoyed saying, you know, Karen, you've asked for this recipe so many times. Look at the date on this recipe. She sent this to me in 2002. Last year, I took her recipe and I made it with chicken and beef liver and it turned out delicious. I've replicated this recipe using chicken thigh and the results are astounding. If you have a really good recipe, you can't go wrong. Now many people can't eat pork for religious or for health reasons, so chicken is an amazing alternative. If you have to use pork though, you can go ahead and do that with the same recipe. My friend David D'Souza, who is our resident expert in Sorpatel, gave me some advice. You can use the shoulder of the pork if you want a more leaner cut, but the traditional cut is the belly of the pig that is really, really fatty. I know I'm gonna get this question. People are going to ask if they can leave out the offal. Now, if you can't eat liver or any other spare parts, sure, you can leave it out, but it's not really going to taste like a traditional sorpatel. Every sorpatel starts with a great blend. I'm using 25 Kashmiri chilies. Now this may sound like a lot. This is exactly how my mother did it. Traditionally, they would use pig's blood to intensify the color, but quite frankly, I find that gross. So the red Kashmiri chilies is going to have to paint the sorpatel red for me. I'm going to throw my Kashmiri chilies after I've deseeded them into my food processor together with some other dry ingredients. I'm going to add six cloves, 10 peppercorns, a one inch piece of cinnamon, one teaspoon of cumin seeds, and one teaspoon of turmeric. I'm just going to process this till I get a smooth powder. Next, we're gonna add some wet ingredients. I'm gonna add eight cloves of garlic. I've just sliced these, as well as a one inch piece of ginger that I've sliced as well, just to help my food processor break it down. I'm also going to add some tamarind water. Now, I basically took some dried tamarind, just about a ball size of dried tamarind, and I soaked it in one cup of hot water. I'm just going to add half of this, and I'm going to blend it. I'm going to keep scraping and then I'm going to add some vinegar and I've got some beautiful Goa vinegar here. I was lucky enough to get it. But if you can find Goa vinegar, it's not easy to find, you can substitute red wine vinegar instead. I've got about a cup here and I'm first going to add half and I'm going to blend it, scrape it down, add the other half and continue to blend this masala paste till it's glistening and beautifully red. You can make this sorpatel masala ahead of time and just leave it in your fridge till you're ready to prepare your sorpatel. We're now going to work on the chicken. I've got two pounds of boneless chicken thigh. Now look at this chicken thigh. I basically bought this from my butcher with the fat on. I asked him not to clean it. The reason for this is I'm trying to replicate the fatty pork that you get in a typical sorpatel. In a saute pan, I'm gonna add some oil and I'm gonna throw in some whole spices like cloves, peppercorns, and cinnamon. This is gonna flavor the oil. Then I'm going to add my chicken in batches. I'm just looking to brown it on both sides. Once my chicken is browned well on both sides, I'm going to add everything back into the saute pan and I'm gonna add some salt and two 
cups of water. Now the water is going to create a beautiful chicken stock and it's also going to cook my chicken. I'm just gonna put a lid on it and let this cook for about 15 minutes. Once my chicken is ready, I'm going to take it out of the pan and leave it aside to cool and I'm going to pour the stock into another bowl. Now I follow a two is to one ratio proportion that is two parts chicken to one part liver. And I prefer to use only liver. I find that if you use a lot of different things like liver and kidneys, then the texture is very, very confusing. I'm using beef liver because it looks very similar to pork liver. Also, it's a very large piece. It makes it really, really easy for me to cut. If you can't eat beef, however, you're totally fine to use lamb or even goat liver instead. You can't use chicken liver though because the texture is too soft and it's just going to break apart on you. I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to throw in some whole spices like cloves and cinnamon and peppercorns and I'm now going to saute my beef liver. Now liver burns quite quickly so you need to watch this very carefully. Just sear it on one side, sear it on the other side, throw in some salt and two cups of water. I'm going to cover this and bring this to the boil as well. Please practice food safety. Make sure that your utensils that touch raw and cooked meat are kept separate and make sure to wash all of your knives and your chopping boards in between. Once my liver is cooked, I'm going to follow the same process. I'm just going to take it out and leave it aside and I'm going to leave the stock in a separate container for later. Now this is the part where you need a lot of patience. My chicken and my liver have cooled and I'm going to proceed to cut these into small cubes. I'm going to be as meticulous as my mom, or I'm going to try to be as meticulous as my mom, but chicken does not have the same texture exactly as pork. So it does tend to fall apart a little bit, but just use a sharp knife and just take your time with the chicken. I'm gonna cut it into cubes, and once I finish cutting up all of the chicken thigh, I'm going to do the exact thing with the liver. Now, if you find that your liver is slightly pink in the middle, don't worry about it. Just slice it up and throw it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. It's gonna cook right up and make it much easier to cut. I have wiped down my saute pan and I'm gonna add some oil to it and I'm going to saute some julienne of ginger and garlic, as well as two green chilies that I just slit. Now, my mom loved to use these as a garnish. So I'm going to saute this and then just keep it aside. I'm going to add a bit more oil and I'm going to saute one cup of red onions. Now I've just finely diced these onions and I'm just going to cook it till it's nice and golden brown. Next I'm going to add all of the chicken and the liver that I cut into little cubes. I'm going to add this into my pan and I'm going to saute it. I'm going to make sure that everything is cooked at this point. Next I'm going to add all of that luscious red masala right in and I'm going to stir it around to make sure that every piece of chicken and liver is coated in this wonderful sorpatel masala. I'm also going to add one cup of water to my food processor because I don't want to lose any of this luscious red paste and I'm going to add that into my saute pan. Add a half cup of tamarind water and I'm also going to add the stock. Now you remember the stock we made earlier with the chicken and the liver? I'm going to add the chicken first but I'm just going to tip out some of the oil that's floating at the top. And I'm also going to add some of the liver stock, but I'm only going to add half of the liver stock because I want to preserve that red color and I don't want my sorbetel to get too muddy. Taste for salt and add salt as required and stir frequently to prevent burning. While developing this recipe, I had so many questions from my fans and followers about the protein that they could substitute in this sorbetel. Some people asked if they could use turkey instead. Some people asked if they could use chicken breast. Now, while I don't really recommend it, it is really better for you. And if you are cutting out fat for health reasons, go ahead head, use chicken breast instead. Like many go on even Indian dishes for that matter, it always tastes better the next day or even the next week. Now typically pork sarpatel can be kept for a very long time, but chicken sarpatel does not have such a long shelf life. So please make sure to consume this within a week. When I was developing this recipe, my friend from Sogleche Sukarin asked me, hey, did you know that sarpatel came from Gujarat? And I thought, what? No, it can't be, because people in Gujarat don't even eat meat. And she said, yeah, don't you know, it's Sor Patel. I can't believe that I fell for that one. And if you're laughing, I can't believe you fell for it either. My Sor Patel is finally ready. I'm gonna garnish it with some julienne of ginger and garlic and some green slit chilies. I'm so proud of it. I'm sure my mom is so proud of it too and smiling down on me from heaven. This looks exactly like her sarpatel, little cubes of meat floating in a delicious and deep 
red fiery gravy. My dad had this last year and he gave me the stamp of approval. Now when you eat your sarpatel, you can sop it up with some beautiful crusty bread or even some delicious fugias that will soak up all of that beautiful gravy. Thank you so much for joining me on Cravings Food Adventures. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Make sure to check out my channel for lots of other traditional recipes made super easy. And don't forget to check me out on all of my social media channels. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and Snapchat. Until I see you next time, do take care. Bye. God, really, really. Stop and start. Totally, totally screwed that up. <laughs>